Should we see if the kitten wants to come play with us? Hold on. This is my baby kitten. I don't know if you can see her very well. She has a lion cut right now and she is adorable. Also, if you ever hear snorting noises, it's because she can't breathe through her nose. A few weeks ago, I finished Vox by Christina Dolcher, and I like I needed to take time after finishing that book to go ahead and really absorb my feelings about it because that was a gut punch. There's no other way to describe it. It's just it's a punch to the gut. Vox is the story of Dr. Jean McClellan, who's living in a world where women only get to speak a hundred words a day. She's essentially living in a version of America that Dolcher has kind of exaggerated to its worst case scenario, and it's horrifying. She lives in kind of a suburban area where she has her two sons and her daughter. She lives with her seemingly like loving husband. She can no longer work despite the fact that she's a neuropsychologist. She literally is like the kind of person who is solving serious brain diseases and she can no longer talk. One of the hardest things about reading this book for me, and I'm going to talk a lot about why it was hard, is that her story is a story I think we would find a lot of if America suddenly were to be a world where women only got 100 words a day. She was a woman who didn't take politics terribly seriously, who brushed off her friends who told her to go protest, who never felt compelled to be involved in any kind of political conversation because it makes people angry. And what use is her talking about it going to be anyway? And so she doesn't fight. And this is her in her 40s looking back at how her world got so screwed up and how her sons are living in a world vastly different than the world that her daughter lives in. She's watching as her son becomes more and more radicalized by this kind of alt-right-esque movement that has taken over the country. And the entire time I was reading this book, I was absolutely horrified. Now, admittedly, this is a total exaggeration from our current political situation. It is hard to imagine a world where women are only limited to 100 words a day, let alone where they're severely punished for going over that 100 words. In this universe, women are wearing these kind of Fitbit-like bracelets where if they go over 100 words, they are shocked and cause physical pain and harm as a kind of punishment. That being said, the creepiest part about this book is the way that the mechanisms by which Dolce has created this story and created this universe are not so far off from the rhetoric that we see today. I'm not kidding when I said I had to like sit down and take breaks from this book and that's not something I normally have to do. But I spent so much of it so angry and scared. I felt like I I knew what it would be like to live in this world and every inch of Dr. McClellan's story was just emotionally true even when it was not true in its circumstances. In the story, McClellan is brought in as a kind of exception to the rule where she is, after years of being limited in her speech, being allowed an exception because she is finally useful. Uh, the president of the country, his brother, is uh, no longer able to kind of function and she's a specialist in aphasia, which is the loss of language. And what we find is an increasingly creepy, insidious story wherein she's being lied to around every turn. The idea of turning people's ability to even understand words against them is chilling. It is so, it is so scary. And that you might be put in the position of somebody who would have made that happen, right? It is, it, it's the Manhattan Project all over again, right? You, 
you create something thinking you're going to do something worthwhile only to realize what you've done has been horribly weaponized and the future is a lot more bleak than you thought. One of the worst parts about this story was some of the ways that McClellan's children are impacted and how she's watching them as a mother. She has two sons, one of whom is in high school uh, and a daughter. And her oldest son, who's between 14 and 16, I can't remember off the top of my head, is going into some of his first AP classes and he's going to this class that's essentially an indoctrination class where he's coming home saying things that are just based on debunked science that are like blatantly meant to enable racism and sexism that are just horribly inconsiderate of the people he loves and the way that you would want your child to be raised. And he's being taught directly in contradiction to what she wants to teach him that there are people who are not worth participating in the public discourse. And he's believing it. He's like actively drinking the Kool-Aid to the point where he gets some poor girl sent off to essentially a prison camp because he's tattled. Watching her try to fight this and not be able to because her son is just slowly losing respect for all women is bone chilling. <sighs> I can't decide if it's worse what happens to her daughter who's like five or six and is really like, like going in first or second grade, very young, and who <laughs> comes home from school and on the day that her daughter is supposed to get the like Fitbit don't talk bracelet removed, is angry at her mother for removing it because there was a contest at school to see what girl could talk the least and she had said no words all week. That horrifies me. That kind of incentivization of something so disenfranchising that you can make limiting your own self-expression so appealing to a small child that they never learn any better. It's the kind of book that I want to make everyone read and at the same time I know that the people who I think probably most need to read it would not take it seriously. It, it is a very Handmaid's Tale-esque book in that way, right? I've never met somebody who I thought, wow, you need to read The Handmaid's Tale, who if they actually sat down and read The Handmaid's Tale would take it seriously or really like engage with it intellectually. I think that the, the way that Dolcher creates this very detailed world that is not so unrealistic as to take you totally out of the story is really a testament to her writing skill. And I think the emotional honesty and I think the, the character development, the world building is very poignant and very well done. Again, I, I get goosebumps talking about this and it's been maybe a month since I've read it. I've had to sit on it this long. I, I want you guys to be horrified and angry with me. <laughs> um, and then I have to like acknowledge that, that is not something some people can do right now. Um, but if you are up for the task, if maybe you have a long weekend where you can do some self care in the midst of doing this, this is a book to read. It is a book I think that is well worth incorporating into kind of our cultural lexicon at this moment. I I would love to hear your opinions. I I have no doubt that there's going to be some kind of controversy about this book if it were to make it into kind of more mainstream conversation. And I'd really love to hear your thoughts on some of the things Dalter does in the story. So if you've read it, go ahead and leave me a comment down below. If you have the opportunity, you should for sure check out the audiobook or an e-copy or something. Um, get this story onto your TBR list. Go ahead and leave a comment down below. Remember to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having a fantastic reading week and I will talk to you very soon. If you have the chance, go ahead and go to my Patreon page, check out some of our levels there, and you can help make these videos happen. I'll see you guys very soon.